Okay, welcome everyone. So I want to talk today about a topic which you are about to cover, or you will have just covered, which is proof by induction. Now this is one of the first formal ways that we're going to introduce to you to prove uh, theorems or statements. Um, in particular, in this case, statements which hold true for generally an infinite number of integers. Okay, so we'll come on to that in a moment. We'll come on to, on to what that means in a moment. But before talking about proof by induction in a mathematical sense, I want to talk about it in a sort of general logical sense. Okay. So the example that you will so often see related to proof by induction is about dominoes. So I've drawn here a set of dominoes. These are small plastic tiles which you stand on, a, on their end, and if you knock one over, then you knock all of them over. Okay. So what's the statement that we want to make? The statement that we want to make is that um, all of the dominoes will fall over. Okay, I've stacked them up, I want to prove that all the dominoes will fall over. So we can ask the question, what information do we need in order to prove that? Okay, without actually trying to knock over all the dominoes, what information do we need to prove that all the dominoes will, will fall over? Okay. Well, one thing we need to know is the relationship between one domino and another domino. So let's label these dominoes. Let's label this domino 1, domino 2, domino 3. Um, let's say we have an infinite number of dominoes. Okay. So I'm actually going to call these, so we've got dot, 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 and then let's call this just for some k, and this is k plus 1, where k and k plus 1, they just label some particular dominoes. Okay. And then we've got some other set here, and it goes on and on and on. So what we want to do is to prove that all the dominoes will fall over. But in order to do that, we need to look at what happens between two dominoes. We need to ask the question, for some k, and k could be any k anywhere along here, it's not a particular value of k, it's for any, any value, any domino along here. Okay. If this one falls, then this one falls. So if k falls, then k plus 1. And we do that by looking at the physics of dominoes. We, we look at um, the interaction between one domino, one domino and another. And we can say, OK, that, that's true. If k falls, then k plus 1 falls. Okay. However, is that enough to prove that all the dominoes are going to fall? No. We need one more piece of information. We need to know that the first domino falls. The first domino falls. That's enough information to prove that all the dominoes will fall. Okay? Why is that? Okay? We only spoke here about the k and the k plus 1 domino, that if domino k falls, then domino k plus 1 will fall, because this one will fall into that one, and that one will fall over. Okay? So we can actually use this information and the fact that the first domino will fall. So let's say, having got this information and this information, let's use this information. Okay? So let's use this to say that if domino 1 falls, then domino 1 plus 1, or domino 2, will fall. So we can use this information to say that if domino 1 falls, then domino 2 falls. And we can use this information to say that if domino 2 falls, then domino 3 falls. If domino 3 falls, domino 4 falls, etc., etc. And we can go all the way along and, and prove then, we have proved that then all the dominoes will fall. If domino 4, k falling implies that domino k plus 1 falling, then if the first domino falls, then all of them will fall. Okay? So in fact, the statement here, if k falls, is the inductive hypothesis. Okay? Inductive hypothesis. Okay? And the inductive step is this. Inductive So a hypothesis is a what-if statement. Okay? The what-if statement is, if k falls, then what will happen? And the inductive step is that we can prove that if, if k falls, then k plus 1 will also, also fall. Okay? Now in a moment, I'm going to talk about exactly the same thing, but about a mathematical statement rather than about dominoes. Okay? We'll come back to that in just a moment. Okay. 
So we've just looked at a very physical example of using induction. Using induction means making a claim that if one thing holds, then the next thing, next thing holds, and that some first thing holds. Okay, we'll look at that in, in a moment about a mathematical statement. So let's take a particular proof that we, a particular theorem that we want to prove, and so we're going to try to prove that for all integers n greater than or equal to one, the following statement holds: that one plus two plus three plus dot 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 up to n is equal to n n plus one over two. Okay. Now we could try this for lots of integers. We could try it for n equals one. Okay. In which case you would just get one on the left. Okay. So what this says is add one, two, three up to n. Okay. But if n is one, then it's just one. Okay. And on the right hand side, when n is one, we've got one times two divided by two which is 1, okay? So we can check. For n equals 1, we just have 1 equals, this is the left-hand side, 1, 1 plus 1, over 2, that holds. Now we can check for n equals 2. So for n equals 2, we have 1 plus 2 equals 2, times 2 plus 1, divided by 2, this is 3, that's also 3. Check. For n plus 3, we have 1 plus 2 plus 3 is equal to 3 times 3 plus 1 divided by 2, which indeed is equal to 6 on both sides. Check. Okay. Is that enough? Have we proved this statement? Well, it might be that uh, for n equals 4, it doesn't hold. Okay. So we can check for n equals 4 and show that in fact it does hold. But it might not hold for n equals 5. So we can check for n equals 5, and then we would have to check for n equals 6, etc., etc. And we're trying to show that it holds for an infinite number of integers, for all integers greater than or equal to 1. Okay? How do we go about doing that? So, rather than dominoes, we're going to think of this as statements, okay? a set of statements. So we're going to say for n equals 1, we're going to call the statement 1, S1, simply the statement that 1 equals 1, 1 plus 1, over 2. Okay? And we've shown that that's true, that's clearly true. Statement 2 is the statement that 1 plus 2 equals uh, 2, 2 plus 1, over 2, and we've shown that holds. Okay? So we can, we can write it down for any statement. So I could say, for instance, for instance, statement 6 would be 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus dot 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 up to 6 is equal to 6 times 6 plus 1 divided by 2. Okay, and we could check that. Okay. But rather than doing that, let's actually write these down in some sort of order. Okay. So the statement for some integer here is simply this with some particular value of n put in. Okay? So I put that. And we're going to write it down a little bit like we wrote down the dominoes. So I'm going to write down statement 1, statement 2, statement 3, dot dot dot, statement k, statement k plus 1, I've just written them in a line here. Okay. In the same way that we had a first domino, and a second domino, and a third domino, and a kth domino, and a k plus one domino. Okay. Now, important, the important thing here is that k isn't any particular value. Okay. It's not some particular value of n here. Okay. It's any n. Okay. We just call it k. And the next one, if that's k, is k plus one. Okay. So, how can we prove this? Well, the first thing that we have to do is to prove that the first case, this case, which we call the base case, we need to prove that this is true. Okay, just in the same way that with the dominoes, we need to, to show that the first domino does fall, and if the first domino falls, then all the other dominoes fall. So we need to prove 
explicitly the base case. And in fact, we've done that already because the base case was just 1 equals 1 times 1 plus 1, the other 2. We're happy with that. That holds. Okay. Now we want to look at statement k and statement k plus 1. Okay. I'm going to write this off now. So what is statement k? Statement k is that 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus dot 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 up to k equals k, k plus 1 divided by 2. Okay. But that's kind of what we're trying to prove, except we've just written k instead of n. Okay. So statement k, and statement k plus 1 is 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus dot 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 k plus k plus 1, because we're now going up to k plus 1, equals k plus 1, k plus 2, which is k plus 1 plus 1, divided by 2. Okay. This is statement k, this is statement k plus 1. Now, just in what, as what we did with the dominoes, we want to assume that statement k is true. And we want to use that to prove that statement k plus 1 is true in the same way that we assume that domino k falls, and we use that then to prove the domino k plus 1 falls. Okay. So how can we use this to prove this? Okay. What we're going to do is to assume that this is true. Okay. Let me work this off. So the next step is to assume that statement k is true. Okay? We're not proving that it's true, we're just saying, let's assume that it's true. Okay? That is, we assume that 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus dot 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 k is equal to k, k plus 1, k plus 2. Okay? Can we use that now to prove that sk plus 1 is true? Let's take the left-hand side of SK plus 1. Okay. The left-hand side of SK plus 1 is 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus dot 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 K plus K plus 1. Okay. Now we're going to use this statement because we've said let's assume that this is true. So let's take this part here, which is this part here, and plug it in. Okay. This is the same as this. Therefore, if this is true, then this is equal to that. Okay. Therefore, this 1 plus 2 plus 3, k, etc., up to k, is, we're assuming this is true, k, k plus 1 over 2, and then we've got the plus k plus 1. Okay. So that's that. That's k plus 1 times k over 2 plus k. I've just rewritten this. Okay. But this is equal to k plus 1 times, let's take the 2 up there, okay, times, um, what have we got here? Oh, sorry, that should be a 1. That should be a 1 there. Okay. We've got a k plus 1 and a k plus 1. So this is k plus 1, k over 2 plus 1. Okay. We've got k plus 1 times two, uh, k plus 2 over 2, which is k plus 1, k plus 2, over 2. Okay. But in fact, this equaling this was statement k plus 1. So we've actually managed to prove that. We've proved that this does equal that if this is true. So let's write that down. This means that if S1 is true, then S2 it implies that S2 is true. Okay. But we can also use this to imply that if S2 is true, then S3 is true. Okay. But we know then that if S3 is true, 
and k is 3, then s4 is true. But if, if s4 is true, then s5 is true. If, if s5 is true, then s6, s6 is true. It's true for all integers greater than 1, greater than or equal to 1. Okay, so we've done it. What we needed to do was to show that the base case was true, so in this case for n equals 1, and that if it's true for some particular k, okay, some k, any k, then it's also true for k plus 1. It's true for the next one. Just like with the dominoes, we need to show the first domino falls and that some domino falling, k domino falling, implies k plus 1 falls. Okay? Assuming S SK is known as the inductive hypothesis, proving that SK plus 1 is true based on SK being true is the inductive step, and proving that S1 is true is the base case. Okay? So that's what you have to do whenever you have a proof by induction. Prove the base case, assume the inductive hypothesis, use that in the inductive step to prove that k plus 1 is true based on the statement k being true. Okay? So I've shown you a very simple example for this 1 plus 2 plus 3 up to n being n times n plus 1 over 2, but in fact you can use this for a huge number of different proofs. Generally proofs which, have, which involve an infinite number of integers, we can use proof by induction to prove it very easily for all integers, or for all integers for which the statement is said to be true. Okay? I will introduce some more examples about this soon, um, but for now, go through this, try and go through the example that I gave here, that particular theorem, um, and ask if you have any questions in the comments. Okay, very good. See you all soon.